I can relate to Stern Mace Windu. I don't know if it's because of the massive amount of neurodivergence I possess or the um, ridiculous amount of trauma I endured in the past uh, or the fact that <laughs> for whatever reason I wound up studying and experimenting and practicing with each style of meditation, which means I found more that didn't work than did. My former wife used to say, you are the most miserable meditator I've ever met. Meditation that can open a can of worms. Meditation can make us mindful of our deepest hurts. Meditation can make us mindful of our greatest need of healing. And as I've mentioned previously, I've stated and practiced each style of meditation. Not all meditations are created equal. Stick with the one that facilitates laughter, that helps you uh, relate better to others spontaneously and effortlessly, it helps you to enjoy your favorite media, whether it be book or video. Life is short. Practice the techniques that make spontaneous joy an inevitability. And that's exactly what we're going to do this morning. I look forward to chanting and meditating with you after approximately 30 seconds of housekeeping. Wrong button. Let's try that again. This is Lama Jigme Gyatso of the Buddha Joy Meditation School. I have spent for more than 30 years, I spent more than eight hours a day studying, practicing, mastering, and reverse engineering the teachings and techniques of each school of Buddhism so that you wouldn't have to. Welcome to Meditate Like a Jedi, which is made possible due to the generosity of viewers just like you. This morning, we're going to practice from the sadhana version of the Total Space of Vajra Sattva, which is the Shastra or source text of all the Dzogchen teachings, which came to us through a fellow named Prahe Vajra, one of the reformers of Buddhism who lived in the 6th century, also known by, his Tibetan, by the Tibetans as Garab Dorje. This text was uh, translated from the Tibetan into the Italian by the late Chogyal Namkai Norbu, and then translated again from the Italian into the English by Adriano Clemente. It says it has been adapted and amplified by yours truly. Like many meditation teachers, I see the benefit of performing uh, empathetic bodhicitta and enthusiastic refuge before our meditation begins. You know, there we go, that looks better. Our first recitation is going to be rather literal in nature, and we're going to set it to a triplet chant. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hate, engraving and clinging, by relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. These three nouns are so useful that they earned the metaphoric nickname of the three wish fulfilling jewels, which are kind of like Aladdin's lamp. For our final premeditation chant, I'm sorry, recitation. Oh, let's try this again. Our final premeditation recitation is more figurative and more concise. We're also setting it to the bookend chant. 
May hide the beret of Bing's by by lying on the three jewels. May hide the beret of Bing's by by lying on the three jewels. May hide the beret of Bing's by by lying on the three jewels. And now, together, as a team, let us meditate as transformatively as young Luke Skywalker on Dagobah under the guidance of Yoda. As children, the first bicycle we most likely received came with uh, training wheels, and although they were functional, they were really clunky. Same thing with this morning's first meditation. As we inhale, we can suddenly and mentally recite, recite, <laughs> recite, perceiving this very turbulent play of mind. And as we exhale, we can silently and mentally recite, relaxing into mind's non-graspable nature. Yeah, there. I pay a march to the back of our glory as watch our sound The total space of our shot is the ever good and a man's ultimate dimension of phenomena. Being the, to the, being the pure total path that liberates all, it does not arise or cease, it does not think of anything. We evolved in such a way that every time we inhale, we access our sympathetic nervous system, which is ensconced within the thoracic region of our spinal cord. Doing so optimizes our mind to notice all manner of things, but to do so, oopsie, vulnerably, passively, viscerally, and randomly. Every time we exhale, thanks to our parasympathetic nervous system, we're wired to both physically relax as well as mentally release, so much so that whatever birth we have observed as we breathe in could feel utterly non-graspable as we breathe out. And whatever death we observed as we breathe in could feel utterly non-graspable as we breathe out. Or in other words, as we relax and release during our exhalation, 
whatever we noticed during our inhalation could feel so non-graspable as if it had never been born, as if it could never die. Being love and thus already accomplish it is not practice great compassion. Being great, the profound qualities of greatness need not be praised. Upon the path of Dzogchen, we do not have to force or contrive love. It flows spontaneously in and of itself. In fact, that is one of the litmus tests of meditation. Phenomena do not move the authentic condition. Since self-originating wisdom is beyond searching, in liberating itself it also shows a path of liberation. This is the most efficient path in Buddhism. It's also the easiest. We're already wired to vulnerably notice as we breathe in, we're already we're wired to relax as we breathe out. If we do this well, we master this, which we can do in less than a week. People will entrain up to our example without being sanctimonious, without knocking on the door on a Saturday morning and picking a fight with them theologically, just by being the person that our dog already thinks we are. Vulnerable, and humble, and honest, and playful people will begin doing people will begin emulating our spiritual practice the greatest elements of the bhagavan that exists by nature in all beings however wrongly it may be conceived liberation originates from oneself and not elsewhere this is important we don't get liberation from a book. We don't get liberation from a teacher. Every, com every complex life form on this planet is born with the neurological equipment necessary to notice and release and love. Now let us remove the first of two metaphoric turning wheels and condense our meditation practice from 12 syllables down to just three. During our inhalation, we could silently and mentally recite and notice this. And during our exhalation, we could silently and mentally recite relaxing. Sometimes I forget to check for questions. And <laughs> it makes people uh, get cranky in the comments. The last person wrote that I looked like Mr. Bean, which I think is a very unkind thing to say about poor Mr. Bean.
There will be times when it feels like our circumstance or our body or our relationships or our mind is trying to beat us up. When that happens, playing with one of these 10 labels can help us. Not to change our circumstance, but to stop resisting it and, finding a, and find a way instead to viscerally harness the momentum of its energy. So for instance, if you feel itchy, you might want to play with sensation, relaxing. together the wisdom of greatness is difficult to find it is real as suppression and method though it could be said to depend on something else real bliss originates from oneself once again we need not chase a mantra or an arcane visualization technique or illicit substances bliss comes from within the great miracle is not difficult or qualities and capabilities. Through subtle understanding of the authentic condition immediately arise from oneself. Simply by living in cooperation with our autonomic nervous system. By allowing our mind to notice as we breathe in by allowing our body and mind to relax and release as we breathe out we have all the tools necessary to master the buddha's path in as little as a, as a week meditation is relaxing without seeking in the dharma that does not appear visibly if one actively searches either for the dharmata or for something in it, the natural condition will never manifest. Our controlling tendencies do not serve us well. The supremely secret reality cannot be heard through the sense of hearing. Likewise, it cannot be expressed by the tongue, not even in the slightest, nor can we describe the flavor of an avocado. And now let us remove the second of two metaphoric training oils and reduce our meditation recitation from three syllables down to one. During each inhalation, we could silently and mentally recite this, and during each exhalation, we could silently and mentally recite is reducing ten three syllable labels down to just one requires a bit of the old poetic license. So when we feel a physical sensation, we could silently and mentally recite that noun form. When we feel an emotional sensation, we can silently and mentally recite the verb feel. When we find ourselves lost in memory, we could silently and mentally recite the preposition then. And when we find ourselves in imagination, we can silently and mentally recite the verb dream.
The sufferings of beings as the bodhicitta, that met that fully manifest while pervading on. But that every being moved up as equally just as it reaches of space. Each of us has the neurological equipment necessary to master the Buddha's path, not only practice the Buddha's path, but master it to the point of practicing it spontaneously, habitually, easily, and effectively. That which is the equality of all distinctions is conceived by figuratively saying it is karma. Were it really literally under the power of karma, self-originating wisdom could, would not exist. We are not served well by... I want to say fatalizing, you know, by saying, by just convincing ourselves that we're impotent and we can't do anything. Yes, we can. We can get out of our own way and uh, notice when we breathe in and relax as we breathe out. And that simple task is enough for it nurtures the centered spontaneity that can guide our choices and utterances and deeds and help us to truly become the person that our dog already thinks we are. The causes the Vajra has all the secondary conditions, never having been born it cannot be destroyed. Since it is the Bodhi essence that exists from the beginning, the ultimate dimension is not moved by the effort of thought. Sturgeon's Law reminds us that 90% of everything is crap, including meditation teachers. Perhaps that is why so many of them uh, insist that being rigid, fearful, controlling, elitist, competitive, and cruel, as well as cryptic, are good things. But that is not what the Buddha taught. Far better it is to be flexible, loving, laid back, egalitarian, lucid, cooperative, and kind. Despite the ravings of fools, if we have to get it out, we've taken a wrong turn. Meditative stability of supreme quality. Being real meditative stability is beyond the tyranny of thought. Without applying thought or purifying in accordance with nature, from thought itself wisdom speaks, springs forth. It's not our job to repress perception, emotion, intention, reason, recollection, or imaginations. Our job to watch them passively, vulnerably, viscerally, and randomly, and relax into them the way we might relax into a hot bath at the end of a long winter's day.
putting the expression gateway to the subtle. They seek the path by isolating the mind, maintaining isolation in a secluded place. If we examine well, this is conceptual meditation. The Buddha taught against asceticism. The test of our practice is pleasure. If it gives us pleasure, if it makes us joyful, if it makes us laugh, then we're probably moving in the right direction. If it's making us miserable, that's not beneficial. Excuse me. They coined the t- they coined the terms cause and effect, but but both virtues and negativities dissolve completely. They say we we will get out of this world and nurture supreme complacency and accepting and rejecting. Forcing ourselves to reject, forcing ourselves to accept is not the path of centered spontaneity. Notice, passively, relax, automatically. Attachment and non-attachment are the path of words, and something in the middle is the same like an echo. Happiness and suffering have the same cause, said the Vaj- said Vajrasarva, Lord of Beings. Instead of being Machiavellian, plotting and planning all our choices, utterance, and, and deeds, the hope of acquiring that which we desire, Let us step out of our own way and simply walk in the centered spontaneity that is the natural byproduct of um, letting inhalation do its job and letting exhalation do its job. Attachment day. So if you just joined us, welcome aboard. The moment you have a specific question about Buddhist chanting or Buddhist meditation or Buddhist philosophy or how to apply them, simply type your question in great detail in the chat window. Attachment anger and so please chant with me. Attachment, anger, and ignorance arise from the path of enlightenment's total bony. The five sense objects of enjoyment to also to be the ornament of the Dharma Data dimension. This is not a path this is a path neither of asceticism nor debauchery. We do not flee pleasure nor nor chase it. We recognize that sometimes we'll feel pleasure and sometimes we won't. When we feel pleasure, we notice it. That's what we are wired to do during each inhalation. And when we exhale, we will relax and release, not because we are eschewing it, but that's just because what we're wired to do during each exhalation, thanks to both our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems.
Spaces beyond the arising of thought and thought as of is like space. Without attachment from space dedication, one's great in manifests as space. We don't have to manifest. We don't need a wish list. We don't need a vision board. We are wired to notice what we dread and what we desired spontaneously during each exhalation. We are wired to release the causes of our dreads and the obstacles to our desires with each exhalation. We get far more done by simply stepping out of our own way and aligning our volition, our intention, with the fact we're installed wiring of our autonomic nervous system. Thought-free of quality is the Dharmakaya mastery of awareness and letting go. Like the moon's reflection in water, it cannot be grasped. Through the energy manifestation of Samantha Mantra, the Ali Kali of Alpha Consonants are profoundly displayed. In an illiterate culture, reading and writing can seem magical. Let us not get lost in parlor tricks or the indulging of our own controlling tendencies. For magic may be fun, but it is antithetical to the Buddha's path. Through the on the beautiful tar, the pond, the remanated branches, in the sphere of experience of the whole world, the profound voice of the Buddha arises. Yes, we can use s syllables to, to concoct various physical or emotional states. But that pales in contrast to the power of simply being vulnerable, to the entirety of experience, whether that involves perceiving the external or the internal, the physical or the mental, the pleasurable or the painful, the interesting or the boring, the glorious or the grotesque. There is greater power and vulnerability than there ever can be in contrivance. Wonderful, the sphere of experience of the Buddha is not a place to be found by searching. And like the phenomena of the six senses, it is also not an object we should grasp after. Those who search for it are like the blind reaching for the sky. Back in the 80s, when the crust of the earth was still cooling. Madison Avenue tried to convince us that we are the coffee generation making it happen. In rebuttal to that, a cartoon artist said, we're the coffee generation, and frankly, we're too damn jittery to get anything done. <laughs> the Buddha's path is not about making it happen. It's about letting it happen. Surfing the highest spontaneity, which is not scattered, but centered.
The gradual path of purity that leads higher and higher does not correspond to the nature behind action. Were there really a path to tread just like the bounds of the sky, one would never arrive. In Larry, I think it's Larry Niven's Ring World, there is, um, a, just like Saturn has rings around it, there was a planet, so there was a planet in a different solar system with, with, uh, rings that were not naturally formed they were constructed by a lost species and um this one warrior was on this very self-important D, D like quest to find the beginning of the ring but you can't it's a ring it's a circle it has no beginning similarly the path of contrivance is the path of folly leading nowhere the authentic condition being thus by being shown as it is it is attained as it is the very essence as manifestation arises from it oh how marvelous time past and time present or the authentic condition that is comp oh, that's, sorry about that let's go back over here We are wired to relax and release in harmony with our exhalation due to our sympathetic nervous system. This can create a profound sense of freedom and spaciousness. In an effort to explain it, we might turn to superstition or story, which I would not recommend. Time past and time present, or the authentic condition that is complete in its own place. Likewise, its path is the same, this is its very nature. The universal path that is the same as that is like the moon in the basis of its reflection. As it is the absolute equality of all, is not realized with a limited view. So, we, we cannot indulge our controlling tendencies and logic our way to enlightenment. There's nothing wrong with a prefrontal cortex. It's a lovely tool, but a terrible boss. The, if we live from a prefrontal cortex in enlightenment, we will not find. That is only found by cooperating with our autonomic nervous system. Now, let's take it a step further. Whether we notice, whatever we notice, or let's say all the things we notice during our inhalation come to the same result during our exhalation. We relax and release it. Therefore, we find during our in-breath we experience duality, and during our out-breath we could experience non-duality. So here's the surprise ending. Both are necessary. I've never seen a one-winged bird fly. I've seen them plummet, but I have not seen them fly. Similarly, we need both awareness and acquiescence, uh, perception and release.
Rest in bliss and later bliss for what is directly experienced and what ensues from it. Since they imply the defect of an aspect, one should not rely on them. Let's meditate as if the very act was its own reward. The three times are one without distinction, without past or future, it exists from the beginning. Since all pervaded by the Dharmakaya, that is the mastery of awareness and releases the same. It abides in nature's total greatness. There is nothing artificial or contrived about enlightenment. Finding oneself in the three realms of existence, all is just a name and a magical illusion. Even the great status of a Chakravati universal king, being a magical illusion is an abode to purify. Back in the 80s, we had Robin Leach's Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. And so many people around the world would tune in and watch that and long to be just like them. No matter how wealthy we are, no matter how, uh, no matter how much power we get, or how much sex we get, or how much wealth we get, we still experience. We experience that which we desire and that which we don't desire, that which is pleasurable, that which is painful, that which is interesting that which is boring that which is glorious and that which is grotesque regardless of how many resources we have for for those whose attitude depends on time it does not manifest in time if one practices with an aspiration without being free the saying of the, on the characteristic of emptiness applies. Let us set aside our controlling tendencies. It is one totally beyond an aspect. The yogi dwells in the pathways of birds in the sky, in, a, in the essence that never occurred and never originated. Where are all phenomena, not, where are all phenomena supposed to exist? And this is a great opportunity to, to demystify the word emptiness. If we take emptiness literally, it's not going to make any sense, and it's going to force us, is going to shove us into superstition or pseudo-intellectual skullduggery, neither of which is beneficial. Remember, the Buddha taught the final passage of the Satipatthana Sutta that one can accomplish full enlightenment, sure, in seven years, but also in um, seven quarters or seven months or seven fortnights or seven weeks or even seven days. So you really can't get a PhD in seven days. So trying to think or faith your way to enlightenment is a fool's errand so what is let's, let us demystify this whole emptiness business as we physically relax into our exhalation we can notice ourselves involuntarily releasing that which we perceived during our previous inhalation 
to such a degree that that which we perceived during our previous inhalation can now feel as if it was as non-graspable as a vast empty void, like the illusion of the infinite azure sky on a bright and beautiful cloudless morn, that although it might be tantalizing to the eye, is intangible to the hand. That's it. Emptiness is just a metaphor for the experience of involuntarily relaxing, releasing in harmony with the parent with the parasympathetic nervous system access during each exhalation outer and inner or both the outer is the inner the profound is not an object of understanding not even a part of it existence is only a name the power of mistaken existence thus one remains separate from the quality uh, sorry from the equality of meditation our job is not to label and analyze and explain, but to simply notice and relax. In the outer and inner samayas abide in the nature of the aggregates and sense bases. Since in the three times no one is ever separate from it, there is no need to ever use the word Samaya. Real ethics do not come from fearing punishment or chasing reward. The greatest ethics simply flow from love, and the highest love is spontaneous and uncontrived, and it's accessed simply through a healthy and consistent practice of mindfulness and meditation. Immovable it is the symbol of the body, and shakeable it is wisdom. Not taking hold of anything, it has no self. Not rejecting it, anything, it has the equality that transcends words. We can notice different things as we breathe in. But as we relax into our exhalation, it could feel as if they all share the same ultimate non-graspable nature. Notwithstanding what, who's, and where, all that one uses and enjoys arises from oneself. Here of males and females, the king of equality has never spoken. Here upon the path of non-duality, we do not need to hate or love the various dualities. We do not need to hate uh, one gender and not another, one ethnic group and not another. Uh, one uh, socio-economic class and not another, one country and not another. We can love all beings everywhere. Here there is no mention. Here there is no mention of something to accomplish by means of resolute forceful contact. 
But it is deemed that possessing the only and the part the bliss of magical illusion arises. Since nature cannot be divined in one single way, it appears according to how one looks at it. Even the bliss from the effort and the wish for its manifestation is a great hindrance and defect. Even though we can do some type of magic with mantras, polysyllabic and monosyllabic mantras, the question is not, can we? The question is, is it beneficial? From the perspective of a... uh, Metaphysical cost-benefit analysis, it is not beneficial. Or better, it is to put aside preferences, to merely notice, vulnerably, passively, viscerally, and randomly, relax, and release during the next exhalation. In all the secondary methods for Bodhi enlightenment, one meditates on the attributes of a tantric archetype like the moon's reflection on water. But even if something untainted and unattached results, such meditation is like the sphere of experience of an ordinary person. There is a huge difference between treating the attributes of an archetype as mnemonic devices to remember various metaphors. It's another thing entirely to um, actively concentrate. But even contemplation is active and takes us away from the power of vulnerability and spontaneity. Although by identifying with the body of the great wrathful one archetype, with its body wrathful grimaces as well as attributes, with even the syllable concretely actualized with the authentic condition of the quiescent state is not seen. Would you practice um, creation stage or completion stage? I should say, The benefits of creation stage and completion stage pale before the benefits and ease and speed and efficacy of the great completion stage of simply breathing in and noticing and breathing out and relaxing. Just as the top of a palm tree is cropped, and just as a seed is burned by fire, likewise the dominion of powerful emotions may be prevented if some have taught. All the hundreds and thousands of methods, according to one practice, to what one practices bear the specific fruit. But since enlightenment is beyond conceptual characteristics, it is not manifest from these abundance. Paul the Apostle wrote, All is permitted, but not all is profitable. And in Jurassic Park, Dr. Malcolm said, You're so busy wondering if you could, you forgot to wonder if you should.
Our job is not to indulge our controlling tendencies and pick and choose our emotions. Our job is to notice and relax. Good fortune has a yogi who abides in this indescribable state. For by not discriminating between self and others, the magical illusion of self-perfection manifests even in enlightenment. Imagine you're enlightened. As you breathe in, you could experience, hey, this is enlightenment, groovy. And as you exhale, you will feel that even enlightenment is also non-graspable. If, if all things are ungraspable, including enlightenment, that makes sense how some philosophers have equated both uh, samsara and nirvana. But you might ponder, if everything is the same, why do good? Why not do horrible? Because we're wired to do good. We are wired to have empathy. And the, the, more, the test of our meditation is love's centered spontaneity, allowing our choices, utterances, and deeds to flow from Love's centered spontaneity. It's the wiring is already there. We don't have to force. We just need to step out of our own way. Nothing is occluded, it is perfectly complete, it is unchanging and remains straight. In boundless like space, it is not a phenomena that depends on something else. As long as we are alive, we are wired to automatically notice and relax. We do not notice and relax because we're awesome. We're already wired to do that. And the spontaneously existing total bliss arises from one's recognition through the very power of incomparable wisdom. Reality does not originate from anything else. This ultimate truth of which we speak is accessed, ironically, simply by physically relaxing and mentally releasing in harmony with our exhalation as is programmed by our parasympathetic nervous system ensconced within our spinal cord. It is easy and difficult, it is difficult because it is easy. It is not manifest directly, but is all-pervading. Not even Vajra Sarva can point, out, point it out with a name saying this is it. This amazing marvelous energy manifestation is beyond action in equal to space. From the ignorance that's not, that does not conceptualize anything, it immediately arises within oneself.
This is the path equal for all that naturally abides in all beings. But since ordinary people do 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 defilement, it is like when the doctor has to find the medicine. The defilements are simply being rigid, fearful, controlling, elitist, cryptic, competitive, and cruel. The medicine is simply being flexible, loving, laid-back, egalitarian, lucid, cooperative, and kind. In the domain of understanding is total bliss, that itself is like the utterly pure land of Alti. When lights coalesce from all sides, the four directions, the intermediate ones, and the above and below are produced. As we breathe in, due to our sympathetic nervous system, our perceptual acuity is enhanced. From the indefinite colors of the rainbow, the features of the five Buddha families manifestly appear. And likewise, the moving particles on a moving environment, but it is superior to the five elements. Noticing an element is good. Releasing it is even better. It is not a bud in the designations of past, future, and present. Understanding that it has no arising nor ceasing, that itself is the integration of the three times in the total state. We do not understand this actively, but passively. As we breathe in, we might notice the past. As we breathe out, we might relax and release. As we breathe in, we might notice a fantasy or anticipation or dread of the future. As we exhale, we might physically relax and mentally release. Since our reaction to both is the same, we can infer viscerally that when we relax and release, they are of one taste. Being equal, there is nothing to arrange gradually. Being one, it is beyond dedicating something in a direction. Although the ornaments of accumulated offerings are arrayed, since they exist by nature, there is nothing to array. Ain't no need for ritual. Being spontaneously present, it is beyond dedicating. Pure from the beginning, it is nectar. The twelve sense bases are not to be particularly focused on with special intention. This is a reference to the heart suit that it's easy to get stuck in scholars' traps of sense organs and sense objects, but instead let's just practice in a very visceral, easy, and messy manner. The intention of the mind, the donor, arrays all through the power of perception. In the city, accomplishment that arises from having seen balance, meditation is perfected. As we breathe in, 
And we notice, with great vulnerability, vulnerably, passively, viscerally, and randomly, it can be uncomfortable. But there's a payoff. The payoff is as close as your next exhalation. Keeping it... <coughs> Excuse me. Keeping it for an instant is union. Experiencing pleasure is samaya. Performing the dance movements of method. The union of non-duality is often. Physically relaxing and mentally releasing can be pleasurable. To notice and release is all we need to keep all the samaya, the hundreds of vows, fond over by the minions of orthodoxy. Giving without holding is the dharma cake offering. Being beyond action, all activities all completed. Since our conceptual wisdom eliminates subtractors, balance meditation without speaking is the mantra. This very act, this very practice of Vati Yoga, is all this, provides all the supernatural protection we require. Making offerings due to Guru generosity and all the other meritorious deeds. Without the power of detachment and impetibility become a great bondage. So we know that active attachment and non-attachment is folly. So we can infer that the power of detachment here is spontaneous and uncontrived as natural as relaxing during our next exhalation. Therefore, all that which is expressed in this teaching becomes obscured when one tries to act towards it. Being thus, if it is conceptualized, it will never be realized. At the risk of repeating myself, our controlling tendencies do not serve us well. May all beings practice of kind communication, conduct, and commerce less spontaneous and uncontrived. May everyone be free from misery, may everyone be happy, may no one be separated from the happiness. May everyone have balance from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging freed.
If you feel that I have earned it, you could give this live stream a thumbs up. You could even help support this channel. In approximately uh, 10 and 3 quarters hours, I would very much like to return to lead today's evening meditation class and group practice. And if you are as geeky as me, this is the way. <laughs>